you can start ma'am rinku ma'am okay. yeah okay a very good morning to all of you so today is the third day of a 21 days national training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector and uh, we are very much honored to have dr g taru sharma madam as the speaker for the day so i'll be briefly introducing madam uh, madam is the director of caft center of advanced faculty training head physiology and climatology division and chairperson of faculty of veterinary physiology ivera izzat nagar with more than 30 years of research experience she is a research uh, reproductive physiologist and she did her doctorate in 1989 from ivera pdf in 1999 from lsu baton rouge usa and before joining icr she even served at center for biotechnology nddb mumbai got trained for buffalo embryo sexing at ccmb hyderabad and contributed significantly on various aspects of reproductive physiology her laboratory is very well supported through institute and extramural funding with major research emphasis on embryo genomics and stem cell therapeutics Currently her research focuses on stem cell therapeutics for livestock and companion animals and she would be delivering her lecture in this line only Dr Sharma has developed a novel innovative and efficacious three dimensional microenvironment model for extended in vitro culture of buffalo buffalo preantral follicles using gel synthetic surface matrix and gel droplet micro encapsulation Dr Sharma has done excellent studies on translational feasibility and application of adult and fetal stem cells. She has published more than 129 research papers of international repute and presented more than 200 papers at various national and international platforms. She has been awarded with so many number of awards there are there is I think no award which is left uh, which madam hasn't got. Uh, she has been awarded with young scientist award or gold medal from sapi isca professor lins lager lof memorial award for best research article icr punjab rao deshmukh best women scientist award and she had an honor of being fao fellow she has the national bioscience award from dbt she was nominated for royan award from iran in 2010 She has been bestowed with the best teacher award at university level IVRI in the year 2011-12 Dr A Rao Memorial Award from SAPI in 2012 Research Excellence Award from Indus Global Organization in 2013 Dr G Nirmalan Trust Award 2015 ICR Bharat Ratna Dr C Subramaniam Award for outstanding teachers 2015 another uh, Uh, many list of awards and among them i would like to highlight one of the highest awards of icr which madam got that is the rafi ahmed kidwai award which is the icr's highest award for the scientific contributions in 2019 and uh, she was elected as fellow nas in 2017 and fellow nasi in 2019 and she has mentored more than 30 mvsc and phd scholars and has authored many books book chapters edited a good number of compendium reports bulletins and uh, madam is also member of dbt task force and also a member of rac qrt imc of different animal science institutes of icr so ma'am we are very much uh, honored to have you as the speaker of the day and i am very hopeful that the participants will benefit from your Uh, uh practical application of the stem cell which you have done at uh, ivri thank you very much madam thank you so much uh, dr rinku sharma for a very kind introduction and uh, uh, at the outset uh, so i i'll start sharing my presentation and uh, at the outset uh, i would uh, really thank the organizers uh, especially dr sudesh uh, Vice Principal Scientist LPM at our regional station Palampur and Dr. Rinku Sharma, co-host director for this three weeks national training course on advances in veterinary research for sustainable development of livestock sector. Uh, indeed, a very really apt uh, topic a day of uh, the day needs uh, in uh, intervention and the advances. So, uh, with that, uh, of course, NADCL for uh, Um, for having come forward and uh, to our regional station, and uh, I'm here. 
uh, I believe uh, the parties, I was told the participants, they are mainly the uh, our NAIR's uh, faculty colleagues. And uh, I have been given 50 minutes time. So I start, it is 11.05. Uh, I will uh, respect the time given to me. I move ahead. Well, I, uh, this is uh, what is a main campus. And uh, everybody knows that to be 132 years old, completing, to be completing uh, 1889. And this is where you all are attending uh, the regional station, which has arranged the, this very training program. Well, colleagues, uh, the two points, food security and uh, food and environment, two major key factors. You cannot complete this story without the livestock. And the efficiency of the livestock definitely is a whole key rather than a number of the livestock. So two things which struck to us uh, always, that is, they have to produce better. And they, they cannot produce better if the, they are not in sound health. So a better productive animals with a sound health. Well, I said uh, food, but you just cannot ignore environment. I'm sure yesterday you must have heard uh, Sejan. Uh, he was our student here on the lecture on climate change. So environment uh, is a very, very important thing because this is a vulnerable thing, and these two are the key factors which are in front of us. Keeping this in mind, I move, and this is a table. I'm not going to read it, but uh, what the I, I like to draw your attention on the towards the red side. These animals are equally important, as important as the ones which are in black. Wherein we have been doing uh, extremely well for the small ruminants. And all right, okay, fairly well for the large ruminants. And one another important thing is that uh, for us to remind that livestock sector is the one which is very important an element of agricultural economy. And it has a very, very significant contribution towards the national GDP through the agricultural sector. And the products, they provide so many things. I need not to read it. So uh, with that, I just move. And I'm sure that uh, colleagues who are present out here, everybody must have heard or must have worked with the ARTs. This ARTs, suddenly, these are the uh, game-changing technologies. Uh, gone are the days when we only focus on AI and ETT in a traditional way. So uh, all so much has been done and is being done, however, with an advent of stem cell technology, ARTs have found a very new fragrance, be it the use of stem cells and the transgenesis and cloning instead of somatic cells or the other way around. So with that, I come to the topic which has been given to me, that is advances in animal stem cell research and therapeutics. So uh, when I take you ahead with this work, I like to highlight it was a long back during Aristotle's time. It was noticed that how do uh, the the <clears throat> sorry the small animals they do regenerate, be it hydra, be it salamander, and the regeneration in nature is not very uh, you know uh, not very neglected area. There are very good outstanding examples. Our own uh, uh, embryos, uh, remnant embryos, with which we focus. So uh, the two things which uh, clicked to me, and I put it this way, there is an inverse relationship. Increase the complexity of the animal, and there is a decrease in the regenerative ability. So for your uh, convenience, I would just say uh, the presentation structure I have kept, I shall be introducing the stem cell and the story which has gone all through these years, and the basic animal and the clinical research uh, work ours as well as of others and what is the optimism and the reality check which is very important and then the advances or the future perspective so the question which uh, comes to us is why is the stem cell research so important to us you know so in number of things we can talk about however i shall really be focusing on this because the therapeutics is my focus approach so the stem cells can replace diseased or damaged cells that cannot heal or renew themselves. One, 
or otherwise they cannot be uh, treated with a conventional therapy and hence these cells. This is an important table because I want to again, uh, you know, make everybody realize how important is the livestock sector, be, um, be it anything, including all the food material or be it the therapeutic aspect also. You cannot really go for the human therapies unless you have the large animal model, preclinical model, so they remain the gold standards. And once we say so, the rodents will not serve the same purpose. Once we say so, so the best model and specific application, if that is at place, it would really help. This is a table which is highlighting. And what it says is canine, caprine, and uh, bubuline. I'm not, I have not put the smart experimental model. And the work which has been conducted through uh, our laboratory by IVRI, it's, uh, one can really Google it and find it out but what it could be. It is very important uh, to highlight uh, a fellow uh, stem cell biologist, uh, uh, Jamie Thompson, happens to be a cell biologist, a veterinarian, a veterinary pathologist, uh, Dr. Ringu will be very happy, at the University of Wisconsin. A history was made in 1998 when, for the first time, from frozen human embryos, he drew an uh, embryonic stem cell line. Again, the same person in uh, 2007 has derived the human IPSCs. So, uh, you know, one can think of doing research cut across the boundaries if you really desire and if you really wish. Then came a very golden year that was uh, 2012, the year when Shania Yamanaka and Sir Gordon, John Gordon, they got a Nobel Prize in Physiology Medicine for IPSCs. Incidentally, Shania was born the year, the year Sir John has given uh, his output, and I quote here the key thing that all cells specializes into so many things, and the genes they are not lost. They are potentially accessible if you wish to access them. So what Shinya did? <coughs> sorry, Shinya did. Shinya worked in two thousand six. And he produced induced pluripotent stem cells. So he, he reprogrammed by inserting a few genes and made them, the somatic cells, turn into immature stem cells. Those factors today we call in an honor of Shinya, uh, Yamanaka factors. So uh, again, I would just say uh, 2012, uh, when these two got, uh, Shinya is uh, relatively elder than us, but at a age of just 51, he did wonders of making the IPSCs and change the whole game for the human stem cell therapy. Now coming to why are they so important and why are they so special? So are they really magic bullets? Yes. You can think like that and I'm, I'm not saying for the sake of saying. I'm saying because I have a data to say that. And what is the unique thing about these cells? All right. The uniqueness is that these cells have the ability to self-renew and also these cells have the ability to get differentiated into a variety of cells depending on the type of cells, stem cell you are taking. So let me put it for our uh, dear participants. One can think of uh, classifying the stem cells depending on the origin. Uh, they could be of embryo origin, from the adult tissue origin and fetal origin. Or based on the differentiation potential, we can call them totipotent. That means from zygote, they can make any cell, every cell, including placenta. Then the pluripotent cells, they can make any cell, every cell, but for placenta. So totipotent and pluripotent, they are example of embryonic stem cells. Multipotent cells uh, are the example of adult cells, also the fetal. These are the ones, the blue ones highlighted, we work on, and I shall take you for that. It is important here to say, every differentiated organ of the body has an undifferentiated niche wherein the stem cells are housed. And that is how the wear and tear of a livestock or human is being addressed day in day out. 
uh, don't worry, this is not a busy flow chart. This is a chart wherein I'm showing what all it could be. So embryonic, as I said, and fetal, what we work on, we work on all this. And adult, one can think of deriving be it multipotent or be it unipotent. Okay. So uh, the cells, uh, the sources could be so many. What we work mainly, we, we have been working earlier with the embryonic stem cells, but they have the teratogenic ability, so you cannot probably use them, or not probably, you definitely cannot use them for therapeutic purposes. And that's how we focus only on the bone marrow derived MSCs and the fetal origin uh, derived MSCs. And they have only advantages and advantages uh, one can really think of, and as I have mentioned over here. All right, <clears throat> a quick one. So, uh, the, for the ease of uh, this uh, translational knowledge, you have to understand the physiology of it and the degree of plasticity these cells maintain. So, this is the uh, diagram wherein this is the way they really sit. So, you have the embryonic cells which occupy the major ones. But we work with the multipotent cells for the reasons as told that they are non-tumorogenic cells. One more thing that one has to really understand the role of different transcriptional networks, signaling pathways and different small molecules. What are the ones which allow them uh, to be the stem cells, the stemless maintenance molecules? And then the next question after understanding that what are they? What are the cell sources and what are the probably regenerative medicine uses? As I said already, so these undifferentiated ones, they remain quiescent, be it anything. For your convenience, I have put them in a categorical fashion. And there are so many examples. And people are using in the dental, uh, dental stem cells, limbal stem cells from my fetal stem cells, marrow origin, as I said. Once I move ahead and I'll take you towards uh, the understanding, I will be showing you. Okay. I come to the point, how did we move from embryonic stem cell to the adult stem cells? Way back, uh, maybe some uh, 14 and a half to 15 years back, when we were working on embryonic stem cells, and <clears throat> sorry, one of our clinical colleague, uh, sent a uh, student saying that we want to use the cells for the bone repair model. <clears throat> that time, rabbit was our uh, model, experimental model, and we drew the marrow origin cells, uh, we uh, grew them and massaged them. One point here I like to say, we use only third passage onward cells, and why so? Because marrow cells, they are the source of uh, mesenchymal stem cells as well as hemalopathic stem cells. You all know that uh, the, blood, uh, the blood cells and the source, which is the marrow. So we don't need hematopathic stem cells, we need mesenchymal stem cells. So to avoid the contamination of hematopathic stem cells, well, hematopathic stem cells, they do not adhere to plastic, to our fortune, and they keep floating. So one can really get rid of them right after first passage, but we don't do so. But to be very, very foolproof, we use uh, first passage to ensure that no floating hematopathic stem cell. And at the third passage, absolutely no point of having the contamination of other type of stem cells, which we really don't need for the therapeutic purposes. And then we used it, and since it was a bone repair, so we focused on our osteogenic cells and we work on osteopontin gene. So after having done also, we created a model and we created a 5 mm defect uh, in the radius bone. Uh, these two uh, radiographs are very self-explanatory. It's a day zero to day 19 picture. So this is a control group and this is a test group. Test group have a, has had the stem cells along with the scaffold, because in bone you cannot direct give a stem cell scaffold. I shall talk a little more about scaffold. You just remember this uh, and I will uh, simplify it to you. So you see day zero picture and look at day 30 picture and day 60 picture is perfect. 
So if you get an advantage of 30 days by the intervention of stem cell therapy, it is very, very good, not only for the ailing animal, but also for the caretaker and the old animal owner. And <clears throat> this is how we do the macroscopical evaluation. This is another example. This was an example of a bone defect. This is an example of a wound repair. So for 28 days model, one can say, what is so important? Why should you give stem cells? Wound anyway automatically be closed. But as I said, that if you're getting an advantage of a couple of days, let it be one week or 10 days, that is much better. It's one point. And second point is that the heel wound is much better than the ones which are otherwise healed through the conventional medicines or automatically if the animals are left like that. And this is a, uh, you know, histomorphological evaluation. We do neovascularization, epithelialization, collagen thickness and collagen arrangement and different markers are beat, uh, uh, different staining. <clears throat> So another example uh, I quoted, and before I take you further, let us uh, understand that adult stem cells fulfill most of the criteria uh, which are necessary for cell replacement therapy. You know, they are uh, always so much. The most important, you could read uh, quickly then. I shall highlight they are non-tumorogenic cells and do not harm recipients. We are using them in a Auto, autologous and more uh, regularly or more popularly in an allogenic mode. Though we have done a work on xenogenic mode, but till date, uh, xenogenic need a stem cell guideline. I should talk a little more about that. And these cells could easily be procured. They have very high capability to proliferate in situ. They have the unique ability to allow them to migrate to the damaged tissue or the lesion. And they also have an interacting ability with the host tissue. They do secrete different mitogens. And also they allow the niche cells to secrete in the addition of the mitogens and thereby further replicating the whole thing. So an example of MSCs, uh, caprine origin, let's move to the ruminants. Uh, this is how they appear. And uh, this is how you do the basic characterization. And you have different uh, cell, uh, cell surface antigens. Uh, so we do different cell surface antigens, so like different CDs, 73, 90, 10. And we also do 34, CD 34. Why is CD 34? This is not a marker for the mesenchymal stem cell. This is a marker for hematopoietic stem cell. So this is a fax generation of the cells, wherein you have less than 2% or hardly 2% hematopoietic stem cell uh, population. So this is a negative marker being used and one can go for the multilineage differentiation. They do the osteogenic, chondrogenic, and adipogenic differentiation. Another important task is till the guidelines are at place, uh, please don't worry, I'll uh, simplify and I'll elaborate guidelines. Till the guidelines come to the place and we really go for the commercialization and go for the more OPD patient treatment, what we have done down the years in our division, uh, we have been working last six and a half years on a condition media. What is condition media? It's a spent media recovered from the culture uh, of stem cells. And this is a very rich media, which is having all important growth factors. So these are the Westerns we generated, and this is the ELISA for all the mitogens which we are putting over here. And this is a picture of uh, some ICC localization. So we have shown uh, the protein, we have shown the gene presence, I think, and also we have shown the localization. So no question uh, uh, to ourselves whether they are there. See, the list is long. Everything probably I cannot show over here. What I'm trying to emphasize to this group that they are, it's a very rich cocktail. Otherwise, it is a trash so which we are using. Another important part which we have standardized here, so for example, VEGF, uh, a specific example, VEGF, which is a 42 kilodalton, uh, which is showing a size over here. 
what is the best time you get a maximum vegf it's a angiogenic uh, growth factor as we know and angiogenesis is very much required during the therapeutic use so the concentration in uh, parkamor formins and this the elisa which is particularly for vegf an example i got so if you recover the condition media at 24 it's perhaps 400 picomy picogram uh, per mils whereas if you give little more time of 96 hours it shoots up by 200 picograms so it's uh, intelligently you have to collect the condition media so that's the science behind uh, basic science behind the therapeutic use it's not so simple take a stem cell and give it no so the, uh, the, unless you have this data unless you make yourself a bit knowledgeable you probably cannot go for the application of this okay then uh, once we got one canine a patient which was a i think i have a picture over here a chronic diabetic wound patient wherein this wound was not healing so our colleagues uh, medicine surgery it was almost a year and it was not getting cured so we said why not we put our hand and we do that it took us less than one month with the intervention of uh, this of course uh, with the gelation material we gave and we found that it has done wonderfully well so we generated a you know a diabetic model uh, one student phd student who scientist at camel institute has worked he generated a diabetic uh, wound healing model created a diabetic animals and has done it and fantastically well the uh, condition media has done equally well as the stem cells so uh, this is a, a same story and what we have done is uh, no Uh, am I going smooth? All fine? Yes, yes, sir. Please, yes, ma'am. Please continue. Okay, okay. So uh, this is an example of a guinea pig model. Same thing, and we further did. And here we have done not only the wound healing, the cartilage repair, and the bone repair as well. So uh, a very big paper we could publish in JCP. Uh, It is now about five impact factor. Wherein we have highlighted the mesenchymal stem cell condition based formulation, and we have applied for the commercialization. It has already gone to the uh, ICRs. Agree in a way. So this is what is the whole story. This is cultured NSCs. We uh, collect this cocktail, which is rich into all this, and you could do anti-apoptotic, angiogenic, mitogenic, and so on and so forth. So this battery of mitogens, which Further enhance uh, this uh, regenerative uh, process for whatever we are using. I, this already I discussed with you. Now, as I told you, we not only use adult cells, we use fetal stem cells also. Why did this occur to us? We are basically very greedy and uh, very greedy scientists. Uh, our group is very greedy. We want stem cells from all the corners. So these are. Uh, Uh, collecting the cells from marrow fluid is uh, invasive and uh, pretty painful for the animal. We do collect, but this is a non-invasive uh, way. They are abundant in number, and you know they are neighbor cells. Only they are not uh, embryonic, but uh, they have very high telomerase activity and long telomere length as well. In our uh, veterinary sciences, the demand is a hygienic collection of cord blood. You all must be aware that in human, we have now the cord blood banks. Like uh, you know, when your children are born, you could probably go for the cord blood stem cell, uh, and it would be remaining. It's very cheap now, less than twenty thousand, twenty thousand, and twenty-eight thousand, less than a cost of a mobile. So here, uh, you know, hygienic collection is a, is a very important thing for us when we go for the fetal stem cell. This is a picture. to just share what do we do so fetal is a word which is a common word but one can think of amniotic fluid uh, sac amniotic sac what in jelly and the cord blood so we use all here the explant culture and the cord density gradient sedimentation uh, what the student from uh, our lab has worked into that uh, generated a, a cryopreservation protocols as well so this is all how one really can go for the uh, mainly with the caprine and we have worked out that water and jelly works the best so other three we are not using we are using a water and jelly by default <clears throat> then 
you know once the patient asked uh, madam what happens when you inject the stem cell so this was a question raised to us uh, way back in 2015 so what we have done is we have put an uh, in vivo incisional wound trial where we used a sigma dye pk26 it's a label dye so dna dye so the cell divides and the dye divides and then we generated uh, different uh, histograms and we understood what happens but uh, this did not give a, this gave us some idea what is happening but we were not satisfied only with this so we generated another thing we took a luciferase enzyme which is not present in mammals uh, and we used a rodent model of course we used a rabbit model also we generated transfected msc's uh, with the luciferase and we generated different replicates and uh, luciferase assay uh, picture in this uh, data i'm just sharing so i can uh, kind of impress upon that stably transfected cells we get in a very good number and these are the ones which we use for the in vivo imaging uh, in the live animal model so we can show and we can understand for ourselves that once you inject how do they motivate how do they move uh, and how do how much time they take to move these are the two things so this is one and we have the typical antibiotic selection method in the transfected ones and you can say beautifully uh, you know antibiotic selection after antibiotic selection and here you have uh, this is the hours which is written over here <clears throat> so uh, this is the in vivo tracking data and this is a time of transplantation and this is the bar which is showing the difference between 6 hour and 24 hours uh, all are the bioluminescence images over here it's a big work done and again uh, we have done this whole work not only in the small animals we have taken into the canine spinal cord injury work for that we generated the rat model the rabbit model and in our opd all the patients which were coming for the spinal with the spinal cord injury we have done that so it was a, a very very good uh, robust data and we could publish and we said that allergenic canine dmsc is a potent therapeutic candidate if you go for the cell based therapy where the conventional medicine is not doing that good now the therapeutic strategies and modes you would be very anxious to know what could be the strategies okay one can think of administering the cells directly another approach we use uh, as i said if it is a bone we go for the osteogenically differentiated cells use them post differentiation one can think of doing a tissue engineering and another approach could be activate the endogenous stem cells endogenous stem cells are otherwise also activated if you administer the stem cells what could be the therapy modes autologous as i said allogenic and xenogenic allogenic and xenogenic are the most convenient and practical ways why because autologous supposing if i have a dog today if i come today if i give a sample uh, the laboratory will take minimum 3 weeks to come to passage 3 and then i will call you after th three weeks so in one month time the ailment will get worse so allergenic we prefer and this is the one which is practices in vogue which are, and these are some examples of other laboratories where in uh, wet uh, stem cell ink they have been using for equine model we have a colleague a private uh, person is a veterinary medicine person from uh, pandnagar he has opened up a company named red stem cell india for us the moment we commercialize and our patents are through we will go to him to uh, reach to the market what are the diseases and conditions which are currently being treated with the stem cells our list is long and we ourselves have been doing Uh, with the spinal cord, uh, bone regeneration, tendon, osteoarthritis, diabetes, as I showed. Then uh, we also use uh, skin regeneration. We also use for as an adjunct therapy. That is, along with other uh, therapies which are being done. If there is a, a like you know one goat jumped the barbed wire, there was a big wound, uh, big skin wound. So they were replacing skin from one place to another. In between, we gave the 
stem cell therapy also it hastens so adjunct stem cell therapy these are some examples some publications of a different application model for therapeutics one can go to the uh, google or go to the research gate and uh, read it as i gave my mail id in the first slide one can really approach and i shall be very happy sharing our work this is a local dog uh, nikki you know a very sweet pomeranian was not able to sit or do anything and this is a jumping uh, one now for treatment the whole uh, you know the whole important thing here is and the message i want to share with you all early you reach us quicker is a recovery because neural degeneration is very fast and up to certain extent you can recoup recover after uh, we get some patients like here this is a dog they approached us after 8 months though the animal improved but we cannot we could not recover it fully so if you approach fast better would be the recovery as i mentioned drug testing uh, now a uh, lot of uh, you know animal activists especially a lady called mrs menaka gandhi she is really being uh, doing i don't know what she's been doing so do away with the animals so one can think of doing a drug testing using different type of stem cells so pharmacologically so we have they can think of uh, doing a new drug development and testing using the cells then you know uh, it was a year uh, 2012 the same year when chenya and sir gordon got a nobel prize another physiologist dr mark post from uh, netherlands generated uh, you know uh, meat from stem cells and uh, uh, the meat burger uh, uh, using the stem cells that was a uh, very very happening story of that year and uh, this is a recipe for the lab grown meat uh, we are having a project uh, one we have funded from the biotechnology department to ccmb and our nrc on meat at hyderabad and one our laboratory is working with nrc meat to generate a stem cell origin meat that's a way forward they claim that you could slash the number of cattle farm for food and the ghg emission well in the india the story is a bit different i personally have a slightly different uh, reservation uh, uh, you know seconding the view however i will not deviate from my discussion and i'll concentrate only on the therapeutic approach so why do these therapies take so long to reach patients so many reasons you know regulatory developments major reason then uh, the technologies uh, which we are generating uh it's not we actually one or two laboratories cannot do many of us have to do and ultimately our market partners have to take it forward then manufacturing consistency in the manufacturing of these cells and the genetic stability of the cell line till date we have deposited eight cell lines to our btcc repository uh, i i don't have the numbers here but just i'm sharing and so this is important thing then the biobanking which we have been doing for different species is a very important thing it has to be expanded that's a limitation then innovation and productivity and economic growth and the inverse correlation which exists uh, with the support of uh, public funding for biomedical research but the policy report claims that stem cell therapies uh, uh, you know the future what exactly it is so it's a kind of still being policy makers are talking a lot and then large scale as i said corporate investment and involvement both you remember i told you uh, scaffold uh, so retention and survival of stem cell transplantation post transplantation uh, is very important and it is improved if you insert a three dimensional biodegradable liquid scaffold way back in 2005 or 6 when we were working with the three dimensional uh, structure as dr rinku said for the preanthid follicles so we used it for our stem cells also and we have been using this uh, gelation material three dimensional gelation material for the retention of the stem cells a bit for the ligament rupture of bone but then off late we i just want to make uh, these things in such a way 
that cell should be available in the uh, supermarkets or in the veterinary stores so that one can think of using in a handy handy plus style mode so if we can generate one or two scaffolds uh, which are implanted with the either the outdoor of the condition media or the stem cells uh, which are not uh, needing a uh, lot of uh, at best the 4 degree centigrade fridge that was our uh, approach so we started working on uh, different bioactive molecules including nano molecules and now we are working on the biosensors so i'll not uh, stretch more i'll focus that why the scaffolds so these are the bio scaffolds which we have been using so this is the mesenchymal stem cell as i said passage 3 onwards so the scaffolds they can get and this is a mesh they uh, go there and they uh, we put uh, this took us quite a lot of time because if you put the mesh it gets folded so we did a uh, lot of uh, you know inner beads and uh, stable it uh, made it stable into the dish and then we have given a cells once the cell come between the mesh then it becomes a mesh uh, uh, which is augmented with the stem cells or the condition media lipolyzed and this we generated and we have a provisional patent application in 2021 uh, march we actually we submitted in uh, january but it was uh, you know a patent was applied in march and we one paper we have if we can read in biomedicine biopharmacotherapy uh, the scientist is now a student professor at uh, BHU, our veterinary college. Uh, so this is scaffold work with which we moved. Scaffold work we have been doing earlier also, as I said, the gel scaffold for the repair of uh, osteochondral in the rabbit. Also, the cells we are using for generation of, uh, for propagation of different viruses. Uh, uh, one work uh, of the a porcine virus, uh, especially the CSF1, uh, uh, we could uh, propagate using a porcine uh, water jelly with some kind of stem cells because we wanted to use the same, uh, same species cells. But we have seen, we have grown them in the canine species also and it works really well. So this is an idea I am quoting for other colleagues also. They can uh, probably think of Corona has really made us understand that uh, uh, though India is a country wherein viruses uh, viruses are not a problem, uh, bacteria are a major problem. But for the bacteria, we have AMR and abuse of use of uh, a misuse of antibiotics. So AMR is the biggest concern. But anyway, it's a viral uh, uh, stuff getting more viral. So uh, I'm giving an idea. We have only tried with the virus propagation. I'm left with the next seven minutes. So I, sh I think I, I shall uh, cover our it up. This is a very important thing. We have to know the rules, so guidelines, terms and guidelines. Okay, so ICMR, DBT has generated national guidelines for human stem cells, but not for anyone. We have been going to the Drug Controller of India, to the, uh, to the uh, organization which is doing it uh, for the regulators for the stem cells. But still, um, they are not uh, doing, it has been more than one and a half decades since I have been going from post to pillar, ICRDG to ICMR DG to secretary DBT. Still, the papers are moving, I don't know, with what space, not even with the total space. But uh, I think I'm also the stubborn one not going to leave because if we leave and if the guidelines do not persist, this whole story is a big failure. Nothing would reach to market. So the translational, if the translation of this SC research has to happen in case of animal models, the guidelines for animal models has to be in place. And let us hope uh, that uh, we should have in another one year or two years, if not more than that. So this is a summary of the policies for your, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, to let you know that what are the ways these are different countries in our uh, country. Of course, embryonic uh, stem cells are prohibited, but one is authorized to use the stem cell line or the superfluous embryos. But the adult stem cells, uh, they are really, yes, uh, even in our country. So these therapies, they hold a remarkable promise for very many diseases, as we discussed. But the gulf is uh, pretty much there between the public expectation and the reality 
with which we progress uh, towards the clinical application. And the gulf would be filled uh, significantly if we have stem cell guidelines at least. And uh, colleagues, uh, I'm really at it. I'm not leaving the thread at all. So it has to come over there. So these are the obstacles uh, what we have. And uh, uh, I'm really banging more of this. And uh, people who are claiming a uh, use of the embryonic stem cells or the iPSCs, I think it's uh, good research, good science. But, uh, you know, if I can hold it like this, why would I hold it like that? So I would recommend and say adult and fetal origin cells, they do wonders. Though they, they are on the second uh, uh, tier of the pyramid, not only in the foundation of the pyramid, but still they are very important cells. So to conclude uh, the talk, uh, given the research regulatory and commercialization, uh, and of course the health system hurdles, this uh, involved, which are involved in the clinical translation, it seems very likely that uh, we would have the supporters, uh, more to support us with less of disappointment and less of uh, desolation. Uh, and if we have this environment, then I think it would be very unfair to raise people's hope. But we have all the reasons to see the half class full and raise people hope, uh, especially to the pet owners or the livestock owners. I have a dream that if we can think of treating the long bone fracture through different scaffolds, currently we are working, which I did not talk, using a, a solid and soft biological material with uh, two uh, other laboratories of uh, three other laboratories, one of ICMR, one of CSI, one of DBT. And I'm generating those scaffolds for the long bone fracture. We are trying with a radius now. If that could happen, perhaps it would be a very, very big thing for all the animal lovers and the veterinary sciences. So this field is highly promising, but uh, uh, road is a little longer, if not harder, and uh, investment is definitely a uh, little more required. The key point uh, which one could really absorb as a way forward is uh, preclinical investigations provide a new perspective for regenerative medicine. We need more of stem cell line, a national repository and understand the monitoring uh, cell behavior, understand the uh, understand and monitor the cell behavior in vivo, in vivo. And then translational research and the biobanking and regulatory requirement, as I already told. I shall fail in my duties if I do not acknowledge, because what I'm presenting is a huge teamwork. There are two working groups. We are the major people, but we execute through OPD and the veterinary polyclinic, uh, the division of surgery, uh, colleagues of division of surgery, and the worthy students of the laboratories uh, who have worked, and the funding agencies. Without money, nothing happens. So we have had huge fund, including ICR also trusted and gave us a flagship program. And uh, whatever facts work, now we have facts in our laboratory. We have uh, scanning electron microscope also in our laboratory. But earlier, the data of facts, I used a former national professor, Dr. Bhaskar Sharma's lab. So I acknowledge, I use, I would acknowledge Dr. Sai Kumar because all the histopathology work we have done in his laboratory. And Dr. Rath from CDRI Lucknow, uh, because all the in vivo imaging work I did at CDRI Lucknow with him. And also with the AIMS we did, but mainly the data I showed is of CDRI. I want to finish my talk because uh, it is being done in the Palampur, a very divine place uh, covered with all uh, mountains. Uh, Professor Abdul Kalam, honorable uh, former president of India, and a noted scientist said, climbing up onto a beat a mountain or your own career, it really demands a strength, whether it is to do any one or either of them. I thank each one of you. Uh, for being patient and I may be allowed to unshare my slides and I reach back to you. Thank you so much.
I'm ready to take questions. Uh, Dr. Rinku, it is 11.50. I have uh, respected the timeline given a little less than 50 minutes because yes, four please. minutes uh, you were kind enough to introduce. So uh, I wanted to have a discussion. Over to you, Dr. Sudesh and Dr. Rinku. Thank you very much, ma'am, for a very excellent presentation. Thank and uh, uh, ma'am, uh, shall we take the questions first? Please. Or? Yes. Please. After that, I'll, yeah. Ma'am, uh, uh, the first question is from Dr. Praveen. He's asking whether xenogenic stem cells can be useful in other animal of developed phyla. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Dr. Praveen, uh, I can read your question, mm -hmm. and uh, it is uh, very much uh, useful. But here, the key point remains that shall we really go for the genogenic? Because uh, as long as things go fine, it's all good. But the moment you have any deviation, then the scientist laboratory and the institution would get a question and audit para then how could you use genogenic stem cell when the guidelines are not in there? But yes, they are, the answer is very straightforward. Yes, they are there. And Dr. Rinku, I can read a second question by Dr. Rais Rajpura. Uh, so may I answer that question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma it is saying that what is the status of animal cell preservation status and its cost in India? Very good question, Dr. Rais. And, uh, this status of animal cell preservation, we are having the cell preservation of a canine, caprine, bubeline, and all the experimental animals with us. And they are very much uh, with us. If you need, you can rather take it from us. We'll be very happy if you take it and do some research. And the cost one, uh, uh, let me refrain saying uh, it is uh, cost uh, effective instead of uh, saying what is the cost involved. And then your second question is, do the laboratory grown meat will replace or uh, animal meat production? Uh, well, it will never replace. It will never replace. And in Indian condition, probably we don't need to replace. Though I'm not a meat eater, I'm a typical vegetarian, rather hardcore vegetarian. But it will not, not at all replace uh, the lab grown meat, would not replace. And uh, our country is a different type of country. Our animal strength is a different kind of strength. We have more he number of human population. For We are not like America or Europe where uh, the slaughterhouse is robot uh, controlled. We have animal control. So no, answer is no. I'm very clear about it. Then we have a question by Dr. Suman Ravish. In India, where the stem cell center is situated and what's the cost? In India, animal stem centers, uh, stem cell center is situated nowhere, dear. But I'm trying to work hard. Uh, my active uh, service life is less than 10 years. But I do promise that within less than 10 years' time, you would soon have a stem cell research center. There, uh, let it be a question. Soon you will have. I promise. I promise. Till date, uh, it's not there. Uh, we don't have. But in uh, human Medicine we have uh, uh, at uh, Ames, uh, one of my friends, Dr. Sujata Mohti, works over there. And what's the cost of preserving a stem cell? As I said earlier to Dr. Rice, they are uh, pretty much, uh, you know, cost is very cost effective. I'm not uh, saying the cost. Um, well, uh, this is that is the first pattern which you have put. It's covered under that. So allow me to refrain giving the cost exactly. Then Dr. Rinku, may I take Dr. Manoj's question? Yes, yes ma'am. <coughs> Good morning, Dr. Manoj Bambu. Uh, you say that is the collection of stem cell or navel cord of newborn baby's wise decision? Yes, it is very wise. You know, when my children were born, the stem cells were not uh, present. So I could not uh, save uh, the stem cells, uh, uh, the cord blood stem cells. Though I have a navel cord, I have saved... Uh, uh, as a you know typical Indian mother, but not the cells. But yes, uh, I don't know how young you are or whether you are a family man. But uh, if you uh, anybody like it is a very wise decision. Please go for that. Please go for that. Reliance is having a very good plant. They were having a Tamil Nadu. I visited it, and it's perfect. Let me uh, you know retweet on behalf of them. 
that uh, it is perfect and now uh, based on our recommendation through a committee they have opened it up a center at gurgaon also uh, so one can really go for that and then dr shabnam is asking uh, can the stem cell therapy replace the surgical procedure uh, well i'll answer it differently let the stem cell therapy take place along with the surgical procedure why should it replace anything then dr suman ravish is asking in human disease which disease stem cells therapies are mostly used okay that's a good question in stem cell therapy we have the whole uh, for the cardiac uh, repair for the limbal hyderabad has a whole uh, you know uh, a center wherein they are doing it it's a very big rush if you want to go for the stem limbal stem cell therapy you have to take a prior appointment of many weeks the there are very very good doctors some mbbs we invited them they don't have a time to lift phone and talk to you so yes they are very much there in our country it's having dr suresh ramalingam good morning uh, treatment cost uh, uh, which species uh, your question is very uh, vague you know uh, treatment cost for spinal cord and fracture repair in what human or animal uh, we don't understand dr anil deka thank you so much anil uh, thank you very much for your good words uh, dr uh, uh, chukeshwar from i think au guwahati again uh, feasibility of stem cell therapy in animal very much feasible i think my presentation must have made it can uh, i okay can i uh, dr suresh can i yes can i treatment cost and repair i showed many example i mean you know the best thing is if your patients owner are trusting you and if they are coming and reporting and re reporting we have been treating lot of itbp dogs lot of police dogs and if they are coming to us uh, their trust in us is showing and it's loud enough to say it is doable and we are doing it so i think dr rinku these many questions we have in the boxes and uh, uh, okay i think uh, one uh, somebody has uh, come again uh, i think who's that dr johari uh, okay thank you thank you we lo i love taking your question as well dr sarika autoimmune diseases any use of stem cell yes it is there dr suman thank you thank you dr suman uh, any other question i'm ready to take i still have 2 minutes left dr rinku Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, we would like to congratulate you and your team for making the application of stem cell in therapeutics actually happen. And uh, a very good work is being carried out at IVRI. And uh, ma'am, the progress that has been made so far it makes us hopeful about the future of veterinary health. And uh, you have summarized everything, all the loopholes, and about the guidelines, because I think no question is left now in the mind of the people. But uh, uh, whosoever wants to collaborate with you or uh, seek training in your lab, most welcome. Yes, most they welcome. can uh, approach welcome. you, ma'am. Most yes. welcome. Any time. Any time. Any time, Doctor Ringu. Yes. Thanks, Doctor Rahul Sharma, for accepting our request. Thank you for giving me chance. Your time. Really, it's very nice presentation, and we got benefited. Our knowledge is enriched, and I, I'm sure that participants got benefited your the, from your stem cell research. But thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. So thank you so much. Uh, bye from uh, here. So so may I may I leave uh, may I leave the meeting now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for yes, sparing yes, your thank time, ma'am. Yeah, no, the time. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure is all mine. Thank you. By all the best wishes uh, for the coming days to uh, to you and also to Dr. Sudesh. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Madhu.